Welcome back to Assen, to Imola Circuit. This is it, the showdown. Colin Edwards goes into the last round here, leading by six points. Last race, this is the final shootout. I'm Charlie Cox, joined by Steve Parrish. And after that remarkable race one, two halves, Troy Bayless will be more aware than ever of how much work he has to do. Yeah, well, when we arrived here, we said this is it, but this is finally it, isn't it? It's the last time out on the track for these guys. And with just those six points around, everybody will have had their calculation out. It doesn't need a lot of work now. Colin Edwards rode a terrific race in uh, part one of this, in the two parts of part one, didn't he? And, uh, won the first one by seven tenths of a second and followed Troy Bailey's home and part two stopped the race to win it on aggregate. So he now has a six-point lead and could afford to actually finish second to Bailey's in this second part. But there's the circuit. You can see the lap record was taken just now, just hours before by Colin Edwards, 48.717. Circuit length, five kilometres, three miles around. And uh, we have got 21 laps of this circuit very, very shortly. And quite honestly, Troy Bayliss, if he wants to take this championship, this championship that he's led all along, really, since, uh, well, up until the last round at Assam, he has got to win, and Colin Edwards has not got to be second. That is one tall order. Now, that race one, split into two halves, was an absolutely astonishing affair, and as you say, it's left Colin Edwards slightly the better. This was part one. With This was where we thought we would see the end of part the, the first race, but it didn't happen. But anyway, Edwards got a storm in start. Bayliss came back strong, but then Edwards soon snatched it back by charging down the inside of him into Aqua Minerale. And everybody, really, the race was just about these two. There was lots of other people battling around further down. As you see, number 11 there, Ruben Zaus and Harger, and number 100, Neil Hodson on the HM plant machine. Harger passed him, he passed him back, and this fight went on all the way through. Harger took some audacious moves to try and move around the outside, but this was where it was at. Edwards early on stretched the lead. That was when the race was stopped because of oil on the circuit. Hodgson went down on oil, and the race had to be stopped. That was why we ended up with two parts to this race. Red flags came out, everyone had to regroup. The tension was still there because there were still 10 laps remaining of this first race, and off they went again. This time, and the drag race down, it was Bayliss that slammed it in first. Harger nearly ran in the back of Edwards, but not quite this time around. Edwards followed him around for a while, but then soon he got fed up with sitting and uh, breathing those Ducati exhaust fumes he kept talking about. So he charged in front, then Edwards came back on him. And again, this cat and mouse fight went on between Neil Hodson and number 41, Noriyuki Harger, throughout the race. But it was just stunning stuff as number one there, Troy Bayliss, the current champion at the moment, got in front. Edwards at this point really must have known that all he had to do was cross the line very, very close behind him to take the win. But he wasn't giving up easily. He fought himself back in front and uh, charged down the inside of Bayliss. And then Bayliss came back on him and it just carried on like this. But really, Bayliss knew he had to win the race, but it just wasn't enough because at the end of the day, number one, Troy Bayliss, who did everything he could do. He rode the wheels off the bike. You can see he's nearly pillion passenger to Colin Edwards at times. He did everything. He fought that 998 Ducati the whole time, and he got down the inside finally with two laps remaining to cross the line, but it just was never going to be enough. On that last lap, he could not stretch out enough of a lead to break the time that Colin Edwards had on him in part one of this race. It was 0.7, and there it is. As they cross the line, it's only 0.2, not enough. Ruben Zaus had a good run to finish third. Well, not including its championship significance, of course. What a belter of a race it was. Yeah, stunning stuff. But now it is really down to the wire. There's no ifs and buts. There's nothing. The uh, weather is fine at the moment. We keep having a few clouds coming over us, but temperature, humidity is dropping, so that's good news. Track temperature 27, air temperature 19. I don't think you could find a more perfect day to go motorcycle racing. Yeah, the breeze isn't too strong either. It's uh, pretty ideal. And those threatening clouds, remember the start of race one, we actually had spots of rain all around. Fortunately for those guys as well, we didn't have the rain. Monster, monster crowd here to watch this most close of battles. And that is how close it is. 527 plays 521. Edwards to Bayless, who'd have thought it was possible. Neil Hodgson's got that third place wrapped up. Harger looks as though he's got the stranglehold on fourth. Yeah, and uh, Neil Hodgson really is um, going to be out there having fun, I know. But as you say, the uh, championship there in third spot, really... Not uh, 
wishing to be disrespectful, the race really here today is about Edwards and Bayliss, isn't it? That's the main event for sure. And uh, I've never known a championship so tight and so close as this. That is the front row. The same, of course, as race one. The grid stays the same. Edwards, Zouse, Bayliss, Harger on the front row. Yeah, then you've got Hodgson, Ben Bostrom up there in sixth, uh, James Tosland alongside, and Frankie Keeley, very much a local favourite, finishing up the second row. Then Borja, Pedicini, Walker, and Antonello. Izutsu, Lavia, Bocciani, and then Foti round out the third row. And Sancini, Parks, Steve Martin, and uh, Ivan Clementi rounding out row five. Now we are without Pete Goddard, who had started out of uh, position 20 in the first race, but he had that tumble and um, knocked the bike around very badly as well as himself. So sadly, we won't have um, Pete Goddard on the uh, lone Benelli out there for race two. No, and we can only make the assumption it was his oil, actually, that uh, caused some of the problems from the bike. Maybe when the bike hit the ground, it sometimes breaks the cases off the side. Neil Hodgson unfortunately found it, but was able to restart. That was lucky for him on the spare bike, wasn't it? Uncustomary error, too, really, from Pete Goddard. I don't see him tumble much. Well, he has got the world on his shoulders. He's also got the world championship at his uh, fingertips, really. He just needs to go out there, and if he can lead from the start and uh, take this race win, he has got it. What a championship charge it's been for him this year, and he really is on good form. In the first race, he had stretched out a good lead, so he can do it, but he's got this man to think about, who is on the front row with him, Ruben Zaus, who will be doing everything he can, I'm sure, to help his teammate Troy. Bayliss out. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We know he's fast around him. After the interviews, interviews of race one, he said he could win the race. He had a few problems. One or two things that he can make better for this second race. So we'll wait and see what the young Spaniard can do. Now that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Him getting up there and doing that. We can assure you he isn't bored. No, he's certainly not bored. This has got his attention. That is what nerves do for you. It makes you tired for some unknown reason. I think it's sort of saying to you, I want to go home and go to bed. I don't really want to do this, but he knows he's got to do everything in his power to win this race. That's all he can do, win the race, and then just whatever else happens, happens, doesn't it? And what we can guarantee more than anything else, Steve, is that there's nobody in the motorcycling world who will try harder than this guy to do it. No, uh, absolutely. We saw him in... Uh, race one both parts of race one wrestling that bike around just giving it everything the bike was sideways slipping and sliding around Noriyuki Haga hiding behind his wheels we found you Nori you can't hide there nowhere to hide here today he had a good run didn't he Haga that was um, a yeah, pretty race impressive race. performance from him battling it out there with Neil Hodgson <laughs> both times around in fact knocking spots off each other good clean racing but very close and uh, Neil Hodgson was very lucky to get away with that uh, that tumble and actually be able to rejoin the restarted race. Yeah, and, and if it was oil of Goddard that he fell on, then why shouldn't he? You know, that's fair, the thing about it. It's fair, fair point. There's Ben Bostrom. You can just see him in that l &M hat through the crowd there. Very watchful eyes. That's an interesting shot there. You can see how much activity there is on the grid and how the riders have got to filter that out, haven't they? Yeah, uh, it's often been said there's too many people around there. Neil Hodson just praying. Is he on the pit wall there? That's... Uh, I suspect he's doing something like that. But uh, yeah, there's an awful lot of tension and people running around, cameramen, camera crews, mechanics, everybody trying to do their job. It often is too busy. Quite difficult to get a pass to get on the grid there, so it should be, because the last thing you want is people running around, getting in everyone else's way. Little generators down there, they run the tyre warmers, keeping those tyres up to around 75 degrees C, just to make sure that when these guys set off, their uh, tyres will be up to temperature. Very, very sad to see this man go back to America for next year. That's his plan, to go back with Honda America to ride in the AMA Championship. And that's a disappointment for, for me, and I'm sure lots and lots of fans he has over here in Europe. Yeah, he is terribly popular. In fact, that uh, Ben Bostrom replica machine is a very popular road Ducati as well. You see uh, a lot of riders in this part of the world uh, enjoying sporting the 155 livery. Just focusing there. He's had a good weekend so far as James Tosland. And uh, he is uh, feeling punchy as he can show there. Still starting off the second row. It'd be good for him if he can actually break that group of riders that he normally ends up banging handlebars with. Um, Keeley, Pettuccini, all of those guys. He, he has the edge in the front. He's looking closer to it. Poor old Keeley's got the flu, I think. He's got a picked up a cold or something, he's coughing and spluttering, we saw him in race one, 
last thing you need when you've got 21 laps of uh, fighting a 170 horsepower motorcycle around a three mile circuit and, uh, in this kind of temperature. But there you go, it soon gets put to the back of your mind once the red lights go out. On Borja, we're on the third row of the grid now. 32 years of age, extremely experienced rider, very quick rider. Um, needs to finish more strongly than he has done. <laughs> have a nice Chris Walker having a laugh and a joke. Um, I'm sure he's just covering up the nerves. Because I know that Chris, and as along with all the other riders out there, get very nervous just before the start of a race. You try to smile and have a laugh, but inwardly, it's the worst time. But I, I, I don't know if it still goes on. Chris Walker always used to like his, his technicians, his engineers, tell him a joke on the grid to try and ease things. So whether someone's just told him a good joke, it wouldn't be one of mine, would it? He was laughing. <laughs> Indeed. He uh, made a great start too in race one, didn't he? Uh, the first part of race one. He was right up there in the thick of things. Uh, in the top six, actually running in sixth position. He got a, got a belter off the third row. Yeah, he always does start very well, Chris Walker. He's an ex-motocrosser, uses the back brake to uh, keep the thing backed up, starts letting the clutch out, and it nearly just fires itself out, like firing it out of a gun. He doesn't like people to know that, so I've promised him not to tell that I'll tell anyone. Yeah, nicely played. <clears throat> With his hat and a helmet. As the machine of Antonello, he has had a pretty good qualifying as well. Yeah, he um, well, he had a big crash though, didn't he? In Super Pole, Antonello got the thing all squarely and fired himself off. He's there on the grid. So there is the three-minute board, and this is the denouement. We've been waiting for this so much over the last three weeks, particularly in the build-up between these races. Now it's time to see what will happen. Troy Bayliss really needs, like Phoenix, from the ashes to resurrect his championship hopes. We know in second place that six points will seem absolutely massive. Everyone now mounting their machines, the grid gradually clearing. The eyes of Colin Edwards just focusing, remembering the job he has to do, and knowing that he doesn't have to win this race. A close second to Troy Bayless would do the job and significant. Very significant. That one point he came away from Assen in Holland with three weeks ago was something that uh, yeah very worth while banking and he probably will be well aware of that the only fear that he probably has is even if he follows Troy Bailey's home here in this second race is that uh, Rubens House could get involved with it well lots of riders could get involved with it so if he's going to be second he needs to be away from the the chastening, maddening pack, you might say. But I think Colin Edwards will get head down. He's fast around here. He's set the fastest times all weekend and uh, tried to get away. And as we said earlier, it's astonishing that Troy Bayliss, after such uh, a punishing performance early in the season, finds himself in pursuit of Colin Edwards as opposed to leading him. But uh, such is the performance that even coming here this weekend in the different qualifying sessions we've had he's been third he's been fourth he's been second he's been third that's the portrait of a struggle because Edwards has been quickest in every single session Edwards of course as we know won the first race but if there's anybody capable of taking the struggle it will be Troy Bayliss and he will not stop racing until the checkered flag has been dropped right now it's the red flag being dropped this is race two. This is absolutely it. We've got to go around now. One lap. We've got to look around. You can see some cement dust there on the left. There's oil that's been dropped around the circuit from earlier races. So it's a more treacherous place to run on than it was earlier today. 
Yeah, I think um, by the time that Super Sport race has been run previous to this, they should have cleared it up a bit, but yeah, it was very early. In fact, we've had a lot of oil spillages here this weekend, there's no doubt about it, and that's what all the white cement dust is there for, to, to mop it up as quick as possible, and it not only mops it up, it also indicates to the riders where it is, so they sometimes take a, a slightly different line to stay off of it. Drag back up the hill, part of the track where we uh, see the changeover in 14 units from Bayless to Edwards. Out of the Bayless Comfort Zone into the Edwards One. Very much two parts to this circuit, or there is for the two riders chasing this championship. Colin Edwards seems to have the advantage from out of this corner here, which is Aqua Minerali, up the hill to the Alta Chicane. We're on board with him now going up the hill. This is where they climb up the hill. You'll shortly see some curves on the right hand side, which Edwards bounces across every time. This is the Alta Chicane and over the top of those curves and down the hill here. This seems to be the section that Colin Edwards is very fast. After the start of the finish line, into the two chicanes of Tamborello, Villeneuve, Tosa and Tiratella, it seems to be the half of, sir, half of the circuit that the uh, champion number one, Troy Bayliss, is better. We're still on board uh, with Bayliss at this point and uh, just watching what's going on around this part of the circuit. So it's interesting how they both have their favourite parts of the circuit and are quicker than one another in different places. Yeah, and I guess it's a credit to how close they are, but at the end of it, when you add both halves together, they finish up crossing the line about a uh, hundredth of a second apart. So close are they? Bit of catch up though, as we said. That's the view from Hodgson's bike. He's looking back there at Ben Bostrom at the moment. So that's the Hodgson's eye view. We'll be able to see who's looming behind us. But such is the task now that faces Troy Bayliss, that it won't be enough for him to win this race. He really needs his teammate, Rubens House, to get himself between the bike of Bayliss and Colin Edwards. If you like, Bayliss needs, uh, needs Zaus and Bayliss to beat Edwards now. And pretty much that way all year. Edwards being the lone rider, what can he do? He's got pole position. Will he try to bolt? Or will Bayliss try to make this his last stand and plunge into that first corner? Well, if they wipe each other out as it stands at the moment, then Bayliss um, would lose the championship, wouldn't he? Because Edwards starts with six points more, so he can't even try those tactics. Not that I think he would. Well, this is going to be do or die for Troy Bayliss. He's got to win and win some to hang on to this championship. We're about to find out the green flag flies at the back. We're ready for a start. Revs are up, lights are red, and we're ready to jump, and we are away. Everyone cleaning once again. Bayliss lunges across the front of Rubens out. Everyone through streaking down towards Tamburello for the first time. Colin Edwards has got the break. Hodgson having a look down the inside. Hodgson steals the show, so it's Hodgson from Bayliss, from Edwards as we slide through Tamburello for the first time. That's the view back, that's Hager. There's Edwards right behind us. He doesn't need to be here, he needs to be in front. That's not the gap that he needs, but it's definitely the gap that Bayliss needs. Down into Tamburello, out of there, down towards Villeneuve Chicane. Good start again from Chris Walker. Well, this is interesting stuff because Hodgson is that Bayliss has got through there, isn't he? Now Edwards has got to make that pass on Hodgson. What can he do? And looming in the background is the number 11 bike of Ruben Vintau. So Bayliss is away and up the hill. Neil Hodgson earning his money here today for Ducati. Well, a nice early break for Troy Bayliss. Now what he'll be praying for is for Hodgson to just be able to hold up Edwards. Just, uh, give him a little bit of breathing space as we move down through Aquaman. Aquaminerali for the first time with this sweeping right-hander. Have on the brakes, then the drag back up the hill. Bayless has been quick through here, and then from here on in, it's been the part of the circuit where we see Colin Edwards absolutely screeching in behind Edwards here is Ruben Zaus. So it's Bayless from Hodgson, from Edwards, from Zaus. Out of Alta, heading down the hill now. Now there is Edwards, is he going to try to make a move? We can still see him, so we're not side by side yet, having a lunge. As I said, he is really quick through here, but there's no space. And in the left-hander, Rabatta for the first time. Pretty tight. Yeah, it is tight. Now, that was interesting to see. Uh, Neil Hodgson always very, very late on the brakes on that HM plant machine. Uh, and, and Edwards has said in the past, he's hard to pass. Now look, number 11 right behind there, the crowd go mad. As Edwards charged down the inside, couldn't do it this time around, but he's got to watch Zaus behind him. Zaus is really the man. I think Edwards will be able to pass Hodgson reasonably okay. He's been passed for all weekend. So we're going to get to the stadium for the first time. And it's Bayless from Hodgson from Edwards, but Hodgson is having to work pretty hard to keep Edwards there. And that's backing up Ruben Zaus. Zaus looks like he's got legs there. Out through the back of Tamburello. Onto the back straight, heading down to Villeneuve Chicane. 
was just trying to position himself. He's got time in hand at the moment. It's not too critical. Well, absolutely. He has got time in hand at the moment. Hodgson, it looks, yeah, Hodgson looks the fastest man. No question about it. But you're right. Zouse, look at Zouse. The wild man, Spider-Man, down all over the place. Now, Eggers, if he gets a good run up this hill here, he might be able to do something on Hodgson. He'll be desperately keen to get past Hodgson. But no, Hodgson's got a real good drive up the hill towards Parrot. Piratella now, then Edwards, he mustn't get flustered. Yeah, absolutely not. This is exactly what Bayless will need, get his tail up a little bit, and with Zaus in there as well, this is a fiery cocktail. Now, right-hander, Ackerman O'Reilly, bit of a dab, bit of a lift, then the power up the hill. This is the part of the circuit once again, as we see a bit of a squiggle there from Hodgson trying to get the power down. Edwards trying to line him up, having a look down the inside, not close enough. This is a one lane through here, jump the curbs, walk left, and the big long run down the hill towards the township of Evina. And look at that, that's an attack motion just when you thought it was safe to look. But back in the water, he's looking down the inside. Edwards just slides, Hodgson fights back, he's not going to make room for him. Fights back down the inside, Edwards lunges the other way. And Hodgson has to give best. Well, that was very, very brave stuff there from number two, Colin Edwards, because he looked like Hodgson had fought back, but he just kept a tight line. Charged through, that's exactly what he needed to do. Look at these two behind now. Now it's all down to Edwards. Can he close the cat on Bayliss? That's exactly what he'll be trying to do. It'll be interesting to see who puts in the fastest lap next time around. But that was solid, brave stuff. Edwards does put in the fastest lap that time around from number two, Colin Edwards, Casper Honda. And he's looking like attack mode on Troy Bayliss as well. Zaus is right up there behind now as well, so the politics of this is starting to get fascinating. You've got Colin Edwards separated by teammates. Bayless in front, Zaus right behind, Edwards in the middle. Hodgson just getting dropped off again, and of course that familiar old battle looming again between Hager and Hodgson for fourth position. There is Hager just stalking this backpack. 100, Hodgson runs a little bit wide. Now we ride with Edwards. We, uh, we do ride with Edwards. This is the position of the race. After we're on lap three of 21, and if we finish like this, Edwards will take the championship, but I'm getting nervous, and I know Edwards is number 11 there. The stalker there is number 11, Ruben Zaus, who wants to win here today. Real pat amongst the pigeons as they charge down the hill from Tiratella down towards him. This is where Edwards is fast. He's having a look through there. That's a, that's a very, very dodgy part of the track to try to lunge through. The old angle grinder gets going. Bayless gets his feet down. Sparks flying now. Here's where he's quick. And look, he's really got the mumbo of that Honda down on the tarmac, pushing very hard to this one lane chicane, then the run down the hill. And that's where we've seen Edwards drop off Bayless a couple of times during that first race, which was so close with the lead changing and changing again. Is he close enough this time? Here he is. Down the inside, copybook stuff. Can Bayless fight back? Runs round the outside into Rabatza. Carries the speed. Boy, good stuff there from Edwards. There's no mucking around. He's not just going to finish or trying to finish behind Bayless. He just wants to get his head down there. Now we could see some fast laps, but to get some fast laps in, Ed Edwards tries his best and he holds that lead because I thought Bayless, number one, then was going to jam it down the inside and try and slow him down. But Edwards now has a clear track in front of him. He's got good drive out of that corner. I think he can get into that first turn at Tamarello first. He could put in a real fast lap and try to break the toe. Yeah, it ain't over yet. This is the part of the track that favours Bayless, and Bayless is having a look down the inside into Tamburello, really trying to carry some speed. Zaus is going with his teammate. Edwards is not dropping off anybody at this early stage. Down the back straight now, there's another chicane coming. We are riding with Bayless. Have a look. Here is the get to riding it. They are carrying some major speed through there. They really are fast. Is that to Edwards at a 49.038? Bearing in mind, he did a 48.717 in the second part of race one. There's more to come from number two, Colin Edwards, as I'm sure there is from Bayliss and uh, for Zaus, for that matter, because these three starting to break away just a little bit from Neil Hodgson. That move by Edwards a lap ago over the crest of that hill. It was though Bayliss, Edwards just hit the turbo boost and just squirted this thing forward. Got so much speed. Here on in, we're in Edwards' territory. Yeah, this is his bit of the track, isn't it? He jumps the curbs, big style there. Look at him bounce over the top there, chucks the bike down to the left-hand side, grabs a load of power out of there, second, third, fourth, gets up in the fifth gear, coming down the hill now. But now Bayliss is in the slipstream. It does make a difference, but it's a fast approach into the tight double left at Rivazzo, down into second gear at this point. And someone just grab third as they come out of there. Zaus gets the bike slithering and sliding around as he always does, charging out of there. Bayliss not close enough this time as they come up towards the Bassa chicane. I haven't dropped off Zaus yet, he's still very much in touch. The last big 
left, right. The race is going to go so fast from Bayless's point of view and so slow from Edward's point of view in this race order. Edward's seeing a 48-9 there. He's dipped into the 48s. Fastest lap. And he's dragging Bayliss with him though, isn't he? Because this is the fastest lap of this particular race, not as quick as he's done so far. And they've uh, really got the hammer down now as they bury their heads under the screen. Look at them as they come out of there, all trying to get into one another slipstream. It's at the moment number two, Colin Edwards, that's breaking or knocking a big hole in the air for them all to follow. Slowest part of the track, Toza in tight. This is where Bayliss is strong, good at carrying speed out of here. Wants to fall off the hill, very, very steep hill indeed. Up and over the blind crest towards Piratella. Now Bayless has a little bit of a look, faint to pass. He's passed there before. The problem for him, of course, is uh, he can be tempted to let Zaus go and have a work over of Edwards, see if he can do something about it as he tries to ride around the outside into Aquaman Arali. That's not possible. Trouble is, the pace these two are carrying, they're going to drop off Zaus. Well, I don't know if they are, actually. Zaus is looking like he's hanging in there. He's another one that's got nothing to lose everything to gain, hasn't he? He's not chasing the championship as they are, because he's down in sixth place in this time. Hunt doesn't really matter to him, he just wants to win the race uh, or do what he can to help his man out. There he is, as it stands, that would be the, the standings if they finished as they are in this position, but a long way to go. We're only on lap five of 21 at the moment, and Edwards, it would be very easy for him to get tight now, to get nervous, to not be able to push as hard as he wants to. It's not a threat for him to finish behind the bike, behind him, number one, Bayliss, but it is a big threat for him to finish third. What a fabulous position for Colin Edwards to be in, racing for the championship with a margin for error. Back and through that chicane across the stripe for the fourth time. Five laps down, 16 to go. Fastest part of the track here, 260 kilometers an hour. On lap six, gap is very close, Hudson and Hager, and then a big jump back to James Tozland. He was in a separate battle all together with Frankie Keeley, Bostrom and Lavia. That rounds out your top nine, as Uchi just in the 10th. Good performance for him. Now, Edwards looks as though he's just starting to break a little here. Well, I thought he was going to. Last time around, he was 0.3, but he's still 0.3. There's that sort of accordion effect where Bayliss gets right in the back wheel here, up into Piratel. Then Edwards stretches it out again. Then, then Bayliss closes him down as they go into the Tamburello chicane. So there's nothing going on, and they're still not dropping number 11's house off. He'll be pushing as hard as till he falls off, really. We know that. He looks like he's going to at times. Getting that bike all over the place as his arms and legs are stuck out everywhere. Into the Edwards zone as they come through Aqua Minerale. Exhaust pipe dragging on the floor as he stuffs it into that right hand. Gets the power down, climbs up the hill again. The heat haze is there, not only from the track, but from the action here at Imola. South is still hanging with him. I'm surprised. Still hanging in there at the moment. Baylor said before this race he was quietly confident. Well, he can't be quietly confident now. They've already had race one to assess each other's firepower. And he knows what Edwards has got in reserve, and Edwards is just starting to flaunt it now, just keeping out a, a nose in front. Moment there in the background there for Hodgson, just spinning up and just sort of uh, standing up a little bit. The mock high side for him on the way through that chicane, but still sticking with it, with a margin over Norrie Hager back in fifth position. Definitely, as we stand at the moment, the four Colin Edwards' side is number 11 machine, because if these two could pull away, he could drop back, he could run behind Bayliss, wouldn't be a problem, but if he finishes third, he will lo lose the championship. So it's still all on, he'll just be keeping his head down, going as fast as he can. Look, he's not oh, just... South, yeah, so well. South every which way up on top of the kerb. He'll know that uh, he needs to hang in there if he's going to have any chance of helping things out here today. Fastest lap that time around, and Bayliss, 48796. And uh, that is fractionally slower than the time set by Colin Edwards in the second part of race one. Trading lap records time after time in race one. They've got something to fight for now. Right, now, let's see, these two are just stretching away just a fraction now, aren't they, from Ruben's house. Again, spots flying, it's just fascinating stuff going on here. Now, I just think that it looks to me like Bayliss is clinging on with his fingernails just to hang in the back 
of uh, the number two machine of Colin Edwards, whereas Edwards really is just setting his own pace. He's probably thinking, well, there's no point in screwing all the tyres up in these early stages. He's just going to go as fast as he can, but as comfortable as he possibly can. Again, we're up to this part of the section where, uh, of course, where Edwards seems to be the faster. Then it starts to change around on the other part of the circuit. Every single lap is happening. Yeah, and dragging uh, Bayless along at this sort of pace is really punishing on the tyres. We saw in race one, Floyd Bayless ultimately was spared running out of rubber, if you like, by the fact that uh, we had a restart. But in race one, it followed the same pattern. Edwards dropping him off. Bayless pushing so, so hard, really, really working his bike over. And ultimately, he was starting to get dropped off big style when that race was stopped and restarted again. Well, he did that time around 0.5 of a second. Now, Bayless made hard work of that last chicane. He ran in there, looked to be a little bit too deep, couldn't turn the bike, couldn't take the optimum line through that chicane. He made it hard work, which was slow for him, and it's dropped him off just a touch. That's exactly what Colin Edwards needs to do, get him out of the slipstream, not let him use that hole in the air that he's punching, being the lead bike but if he could just get away about the distance he is now, he'd soon be stretching enough of an advantage to stop Bayliss using him for the toe. Yeah, it's not happening yet, but it's just starting to ease out. 0.55 was the gap last time around. Up and over the crest again. Highest point of the circuit now. Duratella, this is that big blind, long left hand of the runs down towards Aquamina Raleigh. Bit of a squirm there from Bayliss. Bigger squirm from Edwards, he's trying real hard. This yep. is no walk in the park. I get the feeling that Colin probably knew he'd stretched out a bit of a margin and Bale is giving it absolutely everything. How he didn't lose the front then, I don't know, because he fired it into that corner. He probably knows I might as well crash trying to catch him because if I finish here, it's no good. Yep, and there's uh, no one challenging his position. He's got second off the way of that, there is no doubt. Again, Bayless' bike not looking so happy there. Really running it on the ragged edge down into Rabatza. Right, just listen to this thing. Yeah, those quick gear changes with that uh, quick shifter system up to about 13,000 RPM. This was where Bayless lost some time last time. Looks good this time around, but he ran in there too deep last time around, so he's back with him. But meanwhile, good news for Edwards is they're stretching that margin on Rubens out. He's a second back from those two. That's what he needs to do, because that way around, he can afford to finish second behind number one, Troy Bayliss. Bayliss looks over his shoulder with his lieutenant. Come on, mate, I said charge, not cruise. Get on with it. Need some help up the front here. There he gaps over the last five. That's, uh, they're pretty quick old times now. We're getting down towards the best times we saw in race one. Now Bayliss rear looking very threatening there. He's good around this corner. He gets on the power and gets the drive up the hill. <laughs> Has a chance of taking it on the inside, going into Piratella. He's gone to that side, but he'll switch to the inside. Depends on how good a run he got up the hill, but he is good into here, but not quite close enough this time around. I think he just had a bit of a slide as he came out of that very, very slow. First gear left-hander at Tosa. Very different line taken by these two every single time down into Ackerman Arali. And on the exit as well, as once again, Bayless is just grinding everything. Everything is going to be a lot lighter by the time he's finished this race, if nothing else. Up into the toe, up to Alta. From here on in, it's a big job to try to do anything about it, which this is where he gets moved so quick. And run down the hill towards town. Zaus doing a pretty strong job hanging in there. Yeah, I have to say, give him points because these boys are at lap record-breaking pace, pushing everything, doing everything they know that they can. And the 23-year-old Spaniard there is hanging out. So it is USA Leeds, isn't it, from Australia. Honda leads Ducati, then Ducati third with Ruben Zaus. And at the moment, the lap time's still very, very fast. I expect it to be early 49. Uh, 149 lap times, but they're in the 48s quite consistently now. This time Zaus puts in a 48.777, still fractionally, that's 700 slower than the lap record set in race one by number two, Colin Edwards. Give him time. He's, he's got his tail up now, Zaus with the fastest lap. On lap nine, he's no slouch, he qualified second quickest. And remember, he won a race here last year and was second in the other, so... Uh, knows which way to point the point again. Now down to the very slow corner. Poser, regroup, run back up the hill. Bayless just hanging on by the terrier. Will not let this bone go. 
fighting for everything, fighting with everything it can possibly throw at him. Yeah, great stuff. Remember these bikes, about 165 kilograms, all V-twins, or they are at the front. The first four-cylinder machine you see is the Via down in eighth position. The rider weighing around 60 kilos, he's a third of the weight of the uh, the whole package, moving his weight around. You'll see them shift to the inside, then they move the body up. Oh! Wait a moment. Yeah, well, that was just as he came off the top of the kerb. Rear tyre started spinning up, it dropped back down, set the suspension going, he got a pogo situation, and Troy Bayliss really, you can see, fighting for all of his life at the moment. And this was it, as he goes up on the kerb there, he was up at the top there, tips the bike over, then as he dropped down, you saw the wheel spin up, it let go, bit let go, and that really was a big moment there. He's got a lot of work to do to pull that back down. Yeah, a little bit of a breather, and we're coming into the stadium section now, so we're going to know very quickly what the gap is across the line. It was 0.4, a lap ago, almost 0.4 dead. So, the last left right. Head down and across the stripe, that 10 to 21, and that gap has gone from 0.4 to 0.62, so that was a two-tenths mistake. Yeah, all out of the uh, Aqua Minerale there, that was what it was, but that will have inspired maybe Rubens Aus to close things down, because he maybe he's going to have a go, but Bayliss, don't discount him, he'll come back. Colin is just keeping lap after lap as consistent as he possibly can. Fourth Hag, a fifth Hodgson, six toes, and Achilles seventh, parts eighth, and ninth is Lavia. That's how it's all running at the moment. But it's it very much so. The Harlem lap rider there doing a great job, isn't he? The young Australian, just the same similar age as James Toes, and one of the youngest riders out there. Back up the climb one more time. Running out of laps, Baylor still pushing as hard as he possibly can. Edwards with the advantage on track, Edwards with the advantage in speed, and Edwards with the advantage psychologically. He came to this race, bear in mind, having tested here. It was one of his nominated test tracks. So in the ensuing weeks between Assen and this race, Colin Edwards has been out, spent a day lapping around here. Troy Bayless wasn't able to do that, it wasn't his nominated test track. So not only did he get the testing, he's had the psychological damage of knowing that the man up in front has had a whole day to set up his bike here. Yeah, it was a good move on Honda's behalf to think that it might come down to the wire as it is doing, and it doesn't get any more down to the wire than it is here in Imola at the moment. To have this circuit as a test track, Ducatis went off to uh, the other Italian circuit at Mugello, and Bailey's put in a lot of laps getting himself together, but it's not quite the same as coming to the track where you're going to race at. Yeah, especially given that some of the practice sessions we had here across the weekend have been interrupted by rain. So in terms of track time and that perfect setup that Bayliss will have been searching for on his machine, he actually had a narrow window in which to do it. Yeah, Bayliss admitted that he uh, had some problems in practice. He only found a good setting in the warm-up here this morning that made him faster, and he got it together. He lapped faster in race one than he had done all weekend. Fastest lap. Now Bayliss takes the lap record. That is a lap, new lap record for Bayliss because Edwards set 48.717. This is 48.704, so that's a new lap record just been posted by number one, Troy Bayliss. Everyone's going flat out here this weekend. Even the timekeepers are being worked over. Now bike number 77 just hopping out of the way there. That's Asarelli just moving way to the left to let this screaming freight train through. And what a pace for these guys to be lapping after lap 11 put a lap down on somebody. Now, Bayliss is now mighty close. I don't know whether or not they've put Edwards off at all. This is the part of the circuit that Bayliss favours with ride with him. Right up the top of the hill as he just crashes the rise, bangs it down two gears, tipped it in. Not close enough this time around, but he is fast. You can see him holding him in a little bit. Down the hill they go towards Aqua Minerale. There's a fast right coming up now. Edwards making that Honda as fast and as wide as he possibly can. Now we're into Edwards' zone again. Climb up the hill is good for the Honda. Bayless just skips that curb, trying to ride the shortest possible distance to get the best possible drive. The torture he must be going through mentally, knowing that even getting past the man in front is not enough. Well, if um, he's getting a pit board, almost certainly Colin Edwards, he will start to realise, I suspect, will be given the signal and they, the team needs to, that Zaus is dropping away. This means that Edwards can back it down, he can be passed by Bayliss. The threat from being knocked back to third is disappearing very slowly behind him. Who the thought would be commentating on a scenario like this in the middle of the year, you could have taken any odds on this. Very much so, with Bayliss just taking all those wins, you really got to the point you felt very sorry for Colin Edwards. Listen to that, I'm fed up 
dispelling those Ducati fears by just wanting to win. I, yeah, I keep finishing second, and that was what was going on. You really did feel for him. He was riding so hard, so well. And all of a sudden, the tables were turned. You've got to say, though, Bailey's brought it upon himself a bit of ass, and that fall when he was in third place really was nobody's fault but his own. Yeah, that's right. He wasn't happy with the bike, couldn't get it to go the way he wanted. He was frustrated by it. As you see, the gap at least come down by a couple of tenths. Seesaw in between these two. Three tenths over the line last time versus five the time before. There's David Tardozzi, the boss of the Ducati team. We saw him last year absolutely beside himself in ecstasy when Bayless took the title. This must be his idea. If that was his sanity, he must feel absolutely shattered by what's going on. Well, raises it. Yeah, but nobody kind of thinks the championship's done till it's done. But I'm sure that Ducati, I'm sure that David Tardozzi, and I'm sure that Troy Bayless at some stage when he had a 50-point advantage mid-season, they would have thought, wow, this is all looking pretty comfortable. And it was, wasn't it? Parts that was what made him stronger. The injuries that Bayliss sustained at Brands Hatch and in Laguna Seca didn't help things, but it really was. Edwards has just got stunningly fast since that round 11 at Hushleyman. Yeah, he's got fast at the same time as Bayliss has got himself into difficulties. It's a could be a season of what ifs. Let's not write it off yet because he's still pushing hard, and there's nothing else sure that he is going to push Edwards hard enough to make a mistake. If he can't do anything else, he can make Edwards try to force his hand and look at this we're coming into the stadium session and the body language of Bayless's bike says I want to get past I'm pushing really hard this is the last step we flick right now about to cross the line for the 13th time and that gap is down to 1.1 1. 1. that's really close 0.16 is the time as we come down towards Camburello we're riding with Bayless was really trying to haul that bike down from about 170 miles an hour. He comes all the way down from sixth gear into second, flicks third, coming out of here now. Oh, another big moment there for Bayliss. He is doing everything. If he doesn't win, he's going to crash the way things are going at the moment. He is doing everything in his power to force He is, and so is the crowd willing him on. And I can tell you we've got an all-time Italian record for the crowd. Here. Another new lap record of 48. Three for Possible. He's riding two motorbikes out there. Where's he getting this horsepower from? This is just will. This isn't horsepower. It's not internal combustion. It's Bayless internal combustion. They're trying to drag Edwards back. It won't be enough because Zaus is too far adrift. But boy, he's taking the hunt up. But Zaus must be shaking. He's not believing what he's seeing. Now, Bayless has just lapped this circuit here at Imola. Three mile track, a second faster than he did in any qualifying session. When he had a qualifying tire on, he's now got a tire on that will do 21 laps. That normally makes a second difference. He got faster or what? It is unbelievable stuff. Edwards jumps the curve, big star now. The pair of them are duking it out in a fashion I've never seen before. I'll tell you what, not only is Bayless setting records, the crowd had as well before all this action. I was about to say, we've got an all time Italian record 97,000 people here at the Imola circuit to watch this championship decided. And every single one of them will not be disappointed what they've seen. These two guys giving it their very, very best. The good news now for Colin Edwards is that if he gets he's past... Having a look. He's having a look. He's got it. He's carried it through. Can he, can he just bring it back down? Edwards has got to try to fight back. Bayless manages to hang it together. We're almost out of break. It's our side by side down the pitch. So he's heading out of the first chicane. This is the fastest part of the second. They're doing 260 k side by side. Almost banging fairings. Excuse me, says Bayless. And through. Right, now Colin Edwards needs to look over his shoulder. That's the only thing he can do is look over his shoulder. He will see that Ruben Zaus has been dropped back. He's 2.8 seconds back. Maybe a bit less now because they tripped over one another in that last attack. That was a bit of a mistake for Bailey's there, but he knew he had to try it. He's jammed it down the inside. Colin Edwards couldn't get through there fast and slowed him down. The gap will have closed on Zaus, but I think it's enough. Lap 14 and 21 if they carry on this pace. Bailey surely will try and slow the pace down now. Yeah, it's, it's the only tactic he's got. He thought about it after race one. He said he just didn't have quite enough time. He ran out of laps. And we asked him post-race. But it is, if he's boxing clever, possible to do. Although with Edwards on a charge like this, you'd really have to pick your moments. If he backs us up too much, Edwards will just clean straight past him. Yeah, that's the danger. What he's got to do is slow it down just enough that Zaus can close in on it, but without allowing Edwards to pass him. And Edwards has a few special places around this circuit where he is very, very fast. So there is your gaps at the bottom, but that is back from Edwards to Zaus. I'm getting exhausted riding this. Side by side, over the crest of the hill, Bayless runs up really wide. Edwards 
tries to have a look down the inside. Now Bayless has the the is from Bayless is looking into the braking zone, but he is not close enough. Serious mumbo in that Honda, though, especially over that long drag section. And Bayless are just riding the wheels off this. Yeah, well now Zaus will see what's going on in front. He'll try and pick his pace up almost certainly because the only chance he has. Now, as it stands at the moment, that was the pass down. There's a look at the front tyres. They nearly squashed their way through the tarmac. Those Michelin tyres grasping and grappling for grip as they come over the line. Now, tear off from Troy Bayliss as he gets rid of the dirty flies and whatever he's been swallowing from Colin Edwards. It's his chance now to give the Castrol Honda a few of those Ducati fumes. He stretched out a lead, but it's no good him stretching out a lead. The only chance he has of taking this championship, we keep going on about it, is for Ruben Zaus to get involved with this. Two on the one, that ain't fair. Exactly what he needs. Zaus is way back in the deck. It's uh, two points. Four seconds back to Ruben Zaus. That's not going to work. No, I don't think uh, Zaus can close that in. He's going to have to put some stunning laps in. Remember, we're on lap 16 of 21 of this final race of the World Superbike Championship. Bayliss has a good look over his shoulder. He sees he's dropping. He'll start slowing things down there. He has to. His only tactics are to really try and block Colin Edwards. Across the top of Duratella again. Down towards Aquamino Rally, different line taken each time. Colin Edwards looks masterful, looks supremely smooth down there. Troy Bayless exploring the ragged edge of adhesion and beyond because he has no choice. It's a much bumpier ride. No need to look over your shoulder. Mr. Edwards is right there. Edwards gets a good run out of the Alton chicane. This is where we saw him have a look last time around. And as I keep re reiterating, Watch that gap, keep an eye on that number 11. Last time around, he was 2.9 seconds back from Bayless. OK, guys, the time we've got to look for here, 49.6. 1 minute 49.6 was the lap time last time around, which is actually slower. He had actually backed the pace off a little bit. We need to watch for the lap time now, see if he's actually pulled it up more. This tight stop start stuff, that's a place where you can do it, because you can sort of stop mid-corner there. Now, power on. Across the line. It's closer, definitely Zaus is closer. Yeah, look at that, that's one 150 point two, so he is backing up. Zaus is a 49-1, the rest of them have done a 50.2, so it's working. Five laps to go, and Colin Edwards will bound to be getting frustrated. As you say, in this slow stuff, he can afford to back it down all the time, and he is, and Edwards nearly runs in the back of him that time around, and he slows things down. He'll be getting very, very cross, very annoyed. Zaus is closing in all the time. And then when he gets coming out of the corners, what he'll be doing, what number one Troy Bayless will be doing, is going in nice and slowly, getting a good Unreal stuff, and he's very doing a very clever job here at the moment. Number one Bayless, slow in, fast in that all the time. Edwards has nowhere to go. The gap is coming down, he has another good look over his shoulder. That's what he's looking for, he's looking for South, he's not looking for Edwards. Back and over the crest of the hill, Bayless can breathe easy here, he's good across the top of Ferratella. We're now running with Colin Edwards, down towards Aquamino Rally, every time takes a deeper line through there, that closes up. This is so frustrating for Colin Edwards, there we go again, closing in on the brakes, Edwards gets the run out, but he's not close enough to get the drive up the hill. This is unbelievable stuff, and it really will be testing time for Colin Edwards. Can he keep his cool? Will he be able to just keep the pace up enough to stop Zaus closing in? We have just a few laps remaining, five laps remaining, or four and a half now as they're halfway round on this lap. And look at those lap times as Edwards has a look down the inside, see what he can do. They are running firmly in the 49s before. Now they're in the 50s, Zaus still in the 49s. One more time through Rabatza. Down the hill now, Edwards looks over his shoulder. He knows what's going on. He can see this is team orders. Got to feel sorry for him. He's getting a bit beat up in by these Ducati guys. Now, no time for backing anyone up here. Edwards is uh, mainly trying to get his head down across the line. That gap is closing more. Now, Edwards has forced Bayless' hand. He's forced him into a 49. They both did it. Edwards side by side with Bayless, and Edwards just slides back through again. Maybe Bayless overcooked it. Well, I think so, but Colin Edwards knew he had to get in front, and now he needs to stay in front. Now it's his turn to back Bayless down, maybe, just a little bit. He's got to get away from Bayless, or got to get the lap times back up again. Bayless will do everything he can. Looks like he's going to run in the back of him now into the chicane. This is interesting stuff. Now Edwards is getting it spinning up out of those chicanes. Bayless will look down the inside. Riding with Bayless now, into the left-hander. This is where Bayless is strong. This is going to be the One swapping and swapping back. This is stunning stuff here at Imola, the final round of the championship. Troy Bailey's doing everything he has in his power. He's using his teammate as best he can. 
Zaus all the time closing in. Last time around, Zaus was in the 48s. The other two, 49. Yeah, it's still working. Teams are getting closer and closer. There's point, point 0.7 between Zaus and Edwards. That's how close it is. And now, once again, there's a chance for Bayless to back it up even further. We're coming down up to this uh, one-line chicane in through Alda. He can back it up a bit there, then stand on the gas again. And through the stadium section, that's a huge opportunity for him to stand it, lock it up, and get back on the power. But he's done it there. Backed it up and got back on the power. Now Edwards builds up the momentum, starts to close it down, catches them again. But that's furthest he's been away in Rabatza for several laps now. Well, it's, his mind will be just working away, trying to understand what's going on. He has another good look over his shoulder. But then, if he's really close to number one, Bayliss, who now leads this race, it won't give him a chance to pick up the pace and get away from Rubens out. So they're all together now. The three of them come across the line, and it is so close. 0.9 of a second, first to third. The entire grandstand, the whole 97.7 thousand people here are on their feet. They are going wild for this. Has to be said, it's a slightly Ducati partisan uh, crowd, although they're all big fans of Colin Edwards, and why wouldn't you be? This two-on-one has got people absolutely fascinated. They drag back down one more time towards field nerve chicane. The chicane's a bit faster than Tamburello. Right, so as soon as these guys get on the gas, they ease out the gas straight away to us. Yeah, and the thing is, Bayless has no wing, there is nothing. He'll look over his shoulder again, possibly see what's going on like you say he's looking for Rubens Zaus this time around head buried under the screen as they come over the top of the hill at the moment Zaus is struggling he can't keep the pace up of these guys when they get going fast there it is there's your gaps at the bottom 0.6 0.5 so it's closing down but uh, will it be enough for Bayless and will it be too much for Colin Edwards Edwards really now looking a lot more attacking through there matching Bayless at his own game Really banging that bike through there, dragging more than just rubber across the ground as they go through Akimura Rally. Bayless almost launches us through Alta there. They run back down the hill. This is where he's got to watch most. This is where Colin's best chance is. Has a look down the inside. Sparks even on that fast corner. Not quite close enough. Grandstand in front of us are rubbing. I think I'm going to tip over at this rate. Yeah, the crowd in front of us all on their feet, waiting for him to come round, and it's not long before they will be coming round again as they come up towards the Bassa Chicane any minute now. This is where, again, Bayliss will try to slow it down in the middle of the corner, get it in nice and fast, stop it in the middle, slow Edwards down, he can't get the run coming out. This time around, will Edwards get the drive out as they cross the line? This is so close, it's down to 0.8 now between Bayliss at the front and South in third. If ever Bayliss had been rude to Rubens out, I wish he hadn't now. Come on, Rubens, please do something. And these two guys, the class of the field, the class of the year, just taking it right down to the wire. No room for back up here, this is quick. Second chicane on that long back straight. Left and the right. Will close it and the drag back up the hill again. Where Bayless should excel. Look at the attitude. Well done, Bayliss ran in a bit too hot, ran in too hot that time around, so this has put number two, Edwards in front. I'm soon going to have to leave the commentary move and leave you to it, Charlie, because this is doing me in. At the moment, now, Edwards back in front, that was a mistake from Bayliss, trying to slow things down, maybe thinking about too much of the tactics as opposed to the riding now. We're back into the Edwards zone, up the top of the hill, front wheel in the air as they climb up to the top towards the Alta Chicane. Back marker coming up now, that's number 50, one of the local wildcard riders. Hope he gets out of the way and doesn't spoil all this. Get off my bike and go home. Glass of water for Mr. Parrish as we move into the closing stages of this race. One more lap after this one, and that's it. it seems somehow fair that it should really come down to a head-to-head -head between these two. There's a little bit of honour in leaving it between Bayless and Edwards and leaving uh, Rubens in the best seat in the house. Fight number 50, eyes on springs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll hold my breath till you pass. Oh, dear me, keep it tidy. Was so close there for number one, Bayliss in second place now. We're on the coming up to start the last laps here. Final lap we're on now, led by Colin Edwards. At the moment, he has the championship. If Bayliss gets past him, though, and Zaus now he's behind a back marker, so it's, it's unbelievable stuff here at Imola.
This is the last lap for Troy Bayless, the world champion. He's going to be riding in Superbike. He leaves the series at the end of this year, and he did not fancy riding this last lap. Looking up, Colin Edwards, exhaust pipe, but he's not going to because he's slipped it through coming down into field lap chicane. He might be into the championship, he's not going to be on the track. Down there with the toes of the hooks left. Edwards just slides it down the inside. He's going to knock the pair of them off in a minute, there's no doubt. Colin Edwards, you don't need to win this race. Second is good enough. Oh, major oh, lap oh, this is it. That was it. Slapper across the top. That was the moment, that was the turning point. Piratola almost hops off, almost hits the ejector button. And Bayless lets him run clear. Well, his feet were off the footrest there. The bike was sliding sideways. Colin Edwards still won't know what's going on behind him. He won't know he has a four-bike lead. He will not even know where Ruben's house is at the moment. He's got to hold it together now. He's got that VTR Honda spinning up. Out and down the hill they go. This is a good, looking good for Colin Edwards now. Final lap of this race here at Imola. Well, Colin Edwards record that number one on Bayless's bike was only on loan. And we all said, yeah, sure, Colin, that's fine. Whatever you reckon. It looks like it was only on loan. It looks like he's going to get it back. There are about four corners between him and the number one on the front of that Honda. And we are counting him down. He's just got to get to this final corner. Don't outbreak yourself now. Colin just getting in there nicely. Round this final corner, and he's done it. Colin Edwards is going to be world champion. He's done it across the line of the back wheel. Colin Edwards is the world champion. Troy Bayless is beaten to the line and beaten for the championship. What an amazing battle between these two. If you're watching this in your living rooms at home, get on your feet and salute the pair of them. Colin Edwards and Troy Bayless. Ruben's house has run out of fuel. Ruben's house bike has just crossed the line. I think he's run out of fuel. Run out of energy, mate. He's going to get off and stack at home. Those guys are too quick. Bayless and Edwards, the most remarkable pair of motorcycle combatants. We are likely to be privileged to watch in the one championship at the one time. Have you ever seen a closer duel? Oh, Bayless buries himself in tyre smoke there. True champions, as you say, Charlie. Kim, Bayless's wife there, he did everything he knew how to do. There's Alicia, not his pregnant wife. She'll have probably had her baby this afternoon watching that. I nearly had one. Already caught the hot towels for you. You just uh, sit there and pace yourself. They are the most tremendous of riders. They have the most enormous respect for each other. Edwards so generously in such a statesmanlike manner said, I don't really care who wins this. Sure, I want to win, but I don't mind who wins. I'm just glad to have been a part of it. The generosity of spirit like that, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see him regain his title. And you can bet that Troy Bayless will be equally generous of spirit in seeding his crown to the American. Well, I've never seen a world championship fought out like that. Bashing, fairing panels feet off the footrest of the last lap, black lines sideways, everything else. And that was just you in the combo. <laughs> that was me on my chair. OK, Susie's in the pit lane and she's with Elisa Edwards. Well, I think there's a lot of people watching that feel exactly the same way as you do. Alicia, it's no wonder. Could you believe that it's happened? I cannot believe it. Um, it's so overwhelming. I really... I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. This is possibly the worst time I can grab to uh, to talk to you. I bet you want to run up there and go and see if you can find Colin and give him a big old hug. Let's go into the garage and uh, speak to some of the team here because what a moment for Cash Door Honda. Um, let's see if we can find Neil Tunsworth, the team manager. Is Neil around anywhere? Adrian Gorse, crew chief. Yeah! Wow, what a moment, Adrian. Yeah, great. I mean, we knew it was going to be a war, not a bad war race, and it was. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can take anything away from both of them. They've both ridden great all year, and I mean, they got, you know, whoever won it deserved to win it, but uh, we done it, so we're happy. Absolutely, well, we can see that. Back to you guys. What an atmosphere it is down here. Alicia sounded almost as upset as you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they did. do deserve it, and they, and they did treat it like a long campaign, didn't they? I mean, looking at Edwards and where he is now, I mean, from where he was six months ago, chasing and Bayless winning race after race after race, this is like a Lazarus-like recovery for Colin Edwards. Look at that, 11 wins, 14 wins, both of them should be champion. Yeah, it's not fair that one of them has to lose. But an astonishing, astonishing feat by Colin Edwards. Forget winning the championship for a moment. 
Talk about rewriting the record books. That is his ninth win in a row and 25 podiums in a row. Yeah, that'll, yeah. that'll stand in the record books for as long as you and I are calling this. Oh, there's no question about it. There's absolutely no question about it. He has just had a faultless year. And at the start of it, or halfway through it, he kept shaking his head. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Well, he's found the route. He found the recipe. And at the latter part of the year, he just was absolutely on it, really. <laughs> Look at him. Troy Bayless said earlier this weekend, he. I just think that's Neil Touch. I think that's the contract there, isn't it? Will you resign? Will you stay with us? I think no, it's his bar bill from last night. It wasn't signed. Troy Bayless said yesterday that I now know how Ryan Edwards felt earlier in the year. And Colin Edwards uh, knows how Troy Bayless feels now. They've both taken a championship from each other. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they, they certainly have. And uh, I, I, as you said, who would have bet money? Adrian Gorse, he's as happy as Colin is because it's such a feat for a number one engineer to engineer a machine to win a world championship like that. I just know the effort that whole, the, the, all of that Castro Honda team boys put in. They just work their butts off all year round. And there is Ruben's house. Well, something happened to his bike. He only just crossed the line. I don't quite know what that was, but something was going wrong with that bike, I'm sure. Uh, maybe clutch problems again or something Very like that. He, he complained about clutch problems in uh, race one. Maybe he had the same, but something was wrong with that bike. Yeah, he's trying to... He looks like he's saying, I could have done it for you. But it was... Um, there was some honour in the way it was resolved, which is as much as you would expect from either man crowd of course is showing its uh, customary enthusiastic restraint there is your final confirmation of race two let's deal with the housekeeping Edwards from Bayless from Zaus oh really Harger fourth just sees off Hodgson in fifth then James Toesland in behind his teammate that's a good result top six Lavia stunning stuff there on the Suzuki that's very good and Brock Parks um, I don't know what uh, V8 is running this weekend but uh, the uh, Palmer Lap Machine really doing well on the leaderboard. Congratulations there from the man who's seen it all, done it all, Frank Keely. Gives Colin Edwards a deserved pat on the back. Oh, it's a collapse of stout party with Alicia Edwards, isn't it? They've all got their World Championship T-shirts on the Castle Honda boys. They had to get those printed up pretty late in the year, I bet. But they bought them from Ducati, actually. Spare a thought for all of those guys in the Ducati team who worked so hard, who did such a fabulous job. It's, it's not just Troy Bayless who has to manfully shoulder the, uh, the disappointment of this. Everybody who's lived and breathed it, David Tadotsi, who runs that team and demands so much and gives so much. Uh, we've both been in this in motorsport where we've won a championship and, and lost a championship, and you know how... Yeah, now, so there's it, no consolation other than knowing you did your best. Yeah, that's all you can think about and just go back out the following year and do even better still. And that's really what you do. You learn from your mistakes. And uh, at the end of the day, they both, as we said all along, they both deserve this championship. When you look at the record of points and podiums and wins that the pair of them had, the thing that's made it hard for both of them is they both decided to do it in the year 2002. Yeah, I guess Colin Edwards will be quietly relieved that Troy's leaving the championship and uh, Colin can have another lash at it. Now, of course, theoretically, um, Colin Edwards goes to Ducati next year, but uh, maybe he might want to take a Honda with him. Well, theoretically, yeah, there's still uh, the deal isn't done, I keep hearing. There's a letter of intent, but uh, it's not all done and dusted, and we don't know what's happening with Aprilia. We don't know what's happening with a number of teams out there at the moment. Or Honda itself. Question mark over whether they race this year, although I reckon... This afternoon might have uh, got them thinking. Yeah, well, if they don't, I want those bikes. I think I'll make a comeback because the way they're going at the moment, they are so good. It'll be a brolly girl, don't you worry. Fabulous atmosphere here. We've been spared the rain. We've been treated to a remarkable performance on track. By this guy too. And he's got his fans here, listen. He did a good job, really. To, to run the pace that he ran at there. Um, and he's about to disrobe, throwing boots and gloves and possibly leathers out there. You wouldn't want to be 
basically a long way and get a city boot on him here, though, would you? No, he's just trying to drop his height a bit. Rubens out a massive man. It's too big to be a motorbike racer. That'll drop his height a little bit. And Colin Edwards uh, mastering the emotions there. I'm trying to. The winner and world champion. There you go. Keep your eyes open, everybody down there. The helmet, an arrow eye helmet coming, flying over the top. And uh, that's a lovely way to win a world championship. Stood on the top spot. What a prize to get. There's uh, the world champion's helmet. There goes Troy Bayliss's. Yeah, he does. Keep your eyes open, everybody. But what a wonderful thing to get. Oh, there's going to be a fight and a scuffle down there. Who can get on? It's like a game of rugby, isn't it? It's a scrum. This is how sports are invented, you know, this sort of thing. <laughs> a 97,000 person scrum. Well, Colin Edwards, he has been Mr. Cool. You'd have sworn most of the weekend he had the, the pulse rate of Bjorn Borg. He was so relaxed, but even he admitted to some nerves near the end, but it's, uh, it's all over now. championships now to five Ducati nine Honda five Kawasaki one Colin Edwards has been um, the champion in a literal sense for the last uh, in recent years really have to look at uh, a way further back to get uh, the last Honda win yeah back to John Kaczynski was the well uh, other than Colin's 2000 one but yeah John Kaczynski and the other were Fred Merkel Way back when the Superbike Championship started. And there's that trophy. The World Champions Trophy. Uh, no, I told you it was heavy. That is definitely heavier than the Super Sport one. There's no doubt about it. Because uh, the World's Cup is with that. Well, Colin says he doesn't like to do a lot of training other than riding motorbikes, so. Well, the others can give up training, can't they? Troy Bowes, I have to say, he's taken it with great pride. He was out there celebrating, spinning up the bike. And uh, I guess he knows that it was a mistake from him at Assen, that third, when he was running in third place and fell off. He said the bike didn't feel like his bike that weekend, but it felt like his this weekend because I have never seen so good a racing as we've seen the whole season for the championship. Susie Perry, our uh, presenter there, getting the right drenching. Couldn't wait for the first race interviews. We're well, well safe up here. Great appreciation. 
appreciation from the crowd. The respect between the two riders, the two combatants, is obvious for all to see. And Bayliss is as dignified in losing as Edwards is gracious in taking this crown. And I think we're lucky to have seen the, the year like this. Yeah, it's been a great, great year. And that, that race is just probably the best race I've ever seen, I think. And I couldn't yeah. believe that those two were fighting for the championship. It just doesn't normally happen that way around. Yeah, it certainly doesn't work that way. And let's be careful with that, please. Oh, nice take. Yeah, and the team guys down there, the casualty team. Workers getting a swig of champagne, and they very much deserve it. 